Hey, it's Eli, and welcome to my introduction of the runner cycle. Now, before starting, I'd recommend you already have some experience with killing runners, and at least know how to perform a multi-kill. I'm going to be unpacking this and other advanced strategies tick by tick, so hopefully by the end, you can finally watch a Tassos POV and understand what's happening. I'll also leave a link in the description to a cape chip video on advanced running mechanics. I recommend watching that after this, as it has some vital information on runners such as targeting that I won't be covering. This video should help with understanding the cycle enough that you can unpack everything that is covered here. Before getting into the cycle, there are some basic mechanics I want to briefly touch on, and the first is solid tiles. If a player moves to a tile, it becomes solid, preventing an NPC from moving onto that tile. This allows us to stack runners, and it will stay solid until a player moves or they are phased by another player. Next is trap mechanics. As you know, the trap has three states, 2, 1, and 0 when it's broken. After a runner is eaten, it takes three ticks for it to fully break. And as long as the trap has at least one charge, the trap will kill as many runners that eat there within those three ticks. This is important because in some advanced methods, or when multi-killing east runners, the last runner may die a tick or two later than the rest. But because they targeted during the multi-tick, this is still considered a one-tick multi-kill. Now what is the runner cycle? Well, the true runner cycle is actually made of multiple different length timers working together, and can get pretty complex and confusing without offering any practical benefit. So instead, we'll be using Hanke's runner cycle, which is a 10 tick or 6 second theoretical cycle that explains why runners behave the way they do. When applied, it can help us understand every defender method from 306 to wheel record runs. Because runners spawn 6 seconds apart, and we'll be using a 10 tick cycle which is also 6 seconds, this means that all runners are going to be synchronised. It's important to note though, if the scroller of the team uses any type of animation stool to delay the spawn of a runner, the runners that spawn after that stool, will still be in sync with each other, but not with the runners that spawned before them. This is why it's usually not recommended to defend a scroll on 306, because fixing the trap will act as an unintended animation still. But aside from 306, you shouldn't really have to worry about this too much. Now that that's out of the way, let's have a look at the full runner cycle. Now before we get to the ticks at the top, I want to cover the bit at the bottom, states. Let's look at a freshly spawned runner. A freshly spawned runner will always random walk, either west, south or east regardless of if there is food for it to target or not. If there is no food, it will just continue the trend of random walking until it either reaches the cave or eventually targets food. The reason a freshly spawned runner will always random walk is because they spawn what is known as state zero. In this state, runners physically cannot target. Aside from when they spawn, a runner will never naturally cycle back into state zero. The only way a runner goes to state zero is if one, it targets food, or two, the food it has targeted has been removed, which is why it's also known as the crash state. After being in state zero for a cycle, runners will then move to state one. And state one is what our entire runner cycle is built around. They will try to target food on tick four, and if they do target, they will go back to state zero. Now in state zero, they cannot target food, but this doesn't mean they will forget their target. So they will continue moving towards their targeted food until it gets removed either by a runner, a player, or by themselves eating. In normal gameplay, the majority of runners you'll be dealing with will be in either state 1 or 0 as they constantly cycle back and forth between targeting and recovering. And don't worry, this will make a bit more sense when we get into the cycle itself later. Now that's state 1 and 0, but what happens if a runner doesn't target? If a runner doesn't target after random walking once, it'll random walk for a second time and move to state 2. If it random walks for a third time, it goes to state 3, and if it happens to random walk for a fourth time, then it'll cycle back to state 1 again. I'm not going to spend too much time on state 2 and 3 runners because the only time you'll encounter them is for the very first runner when you're cannon delaying or if you happen to get a triple west runner. The only real difference between state 2 and 3 runners compared to state 1 is that their targeting ticks change from tick 4 to both tick 2 and 5 for state 2 runners or ticks 3 and 6 for state 3 runners. And as soon as they target, they go back to state 0 anyway. Okay, since we've gotten states out of the way, now let's look into the runner cycle itself. There are three key ticks within the runner cycle. And the first is tick 1. Tick 1 is the tick that all runners spawn on, and it's also the tick where they change states to recover from any crashes, most notably changing from state 0 to state 1. The next tick of note is tick 4. This is the multi-tick or the targeting tick. Now although multiple things can happen in a tick, they can't happen simultaneously. What I mean by this is that all runners may target during tick 4, but they do so in an order. Let's say you're standing in the trap and the call is crackers. All the runners would have targeted the most recently dropped cracker. By letting the first runner eat during the multi-tick, the next runner will not notice the food has been gone, and instead it'll retarget and eat the next available food. This happens again and again until all the runners are dead. The order runners eat is usually based off the spawn order. 
If you're interested in knowing what happens in the rare instances when runners eat out of order, then this is covered in the capture video. The last tick worth noting is tick 6. This is the random walk tick. If a runner has no target on tick 6, it will random walk up to 5 tiles west, east or south. The major reason why this tick is important is that this tick differentiates whether a crash will be hard or soft. A hard crash happens if the runner's target food gets removed before tick 6. This is because if a runner's food gets removed, it goes back to state 0, where it is unable to retarget until the next cycle when it recovers. Therefore, if a runner loses its target before tick 6, it will have no target on tick 6, and will start random walking. This is what you'll see, for example, if you miss a multi-kill. Now if you crash a runner after tick 6, the runners will still be able to walk one tile towards their target food before they notice it's been removed. Because their food's been removed, they will then move to state 0. Because it was after the random walk tick, they simply just stand in place for the remainder of the cycle. On tick 1, they then reset to state 1 and are able to retarget again on tick 4. This is known as a soft crash. And when used to kill runners, this is referred to as a soft multi kill. Now that we've been over states and the runner cycle, let's put it all together and see it applied. The next clip is just a basic wave for no log. One runner has already died and the trap is at 1. Alive are the last 3 remaining runners, runner 2, 3 and 4. Runner 2 is already targeting the trap food, and since it is already targeted, it will be in state 0. On tick 1, 3 things happen. Runner 4 spawns in state 0, where it cannot target, and runner 3 stops random walking south and changes from state 0 to state 1. So it's now in a state where it can. Runner 2 will also move into state 1. On tick 4, both runners 2 and 3 target the trap food, and on tick 5 will go to state 0 as well. And because I'm standing on the food making a solid tile, runner 2 cannot continue moving towards the food like runner 3 can. Runner 4 has just spawned, so is unable to target. On tick 6, runner 4 has no target, so will random walk for 5 tiles west while the other two are still targeting and trying to move towards the trap food. On tick 1, all three runners recover and go back to state 1. Then on tick 4, all three runners target. Runner 4 targets the main stack, and runners 2 and 3 continue to retarget the food that I'm standing on. Because all three have targeted, all three runners go back to state 0 on tick 5. On tick 8, the last runner eats at the main stack, but because this is after tick 6, it only soft crashes. All three runners then go back to state 1 on tick 1. On tick 4, all three then target the trap food, and on tick 5 we'll go back to state 0. And for the last time, on tick 1, when I click off to move, all three runners go back to state 1. They then all eat and multi-kill on tick 4 as they target food one after each other. Then on tick 7, three ticks after they eat at the trap, it finally breaks. Something you may have noticed in that last sequence was that the tick that I moved was actually tick 1, not tick 4. Now this all has to do with solid tiles and update order. Update order is the order within a tick that things happen. Like I mentioned before, things can happen in a tick but do not happen simultaneously. There is still an order to things. The first thing that happens is a player's inventory actions, such as dropping food. Runners then do their actions in the runner cycle, such as targeting and movement. And finally, a player does their interactions, such as movement and picking up food. When we look at a regular multi-kill, the first thing we see is that a player clicks to move on tick 1. This click doesn't register, however, until the next tick. During the start of tick 2, the first thing that happens is the runners check to see if they can reach their target food. But at this time, the player is still standing there creating a solid tile. After this check, it's the player's turn, and then they move off the tile. It's not until tick 3 that runners are able to move onto the same tile as their target food, and because they move at one tile per tick, the entirety of tick 3 is them simply moving onto this tile. On tick 4, they are finally on top of the food, where they can then retarget one after each other and multi kill. Here it is again. Tick 1, the player clicks. Tick 2, runners check the tile, but it's still solid, and then the player moves. Tick 3, they can now move. In tick 4, they multi kill. We can also see the importance of update order during pickup multi kills. 
Pick up multi kill is different from regular multi kills because instead of moving off the food you want the runners to target, you pick it up from underneath you. Now because runners will already be standing on the food we want them to target, we don't have that extra tick of runner movement. Therefore, we must pick up a food one tick later than normal. So tick 1, we wait. Tick 2, we register to pick up the food. Tick 3, runners check to see if the food is still there, which it is. And after this check has been performed, we pick it up and it appears in our inventory. Runners then notice the food is gone on tick 4, but because that's their targeting tick, they will just retarget the next available food during this tick and multi-kill. Same logic applies when doing West Cannon starts using the zombie hand mode. You'll pick up food on tick 6, but runners won't notice it's gone until tick 7. The last method I want to talk about with update order is for false multi-kills. These work similar to regular multi-kills, but instead of moving off the food to the side on tick 1, we move 3-4 to four tiles away and place another food. Let's jump straight into the breakdown. We click to move on tick 1 as normal. And because we run at 2 tiles per tick, we're able to move 2 tiles away by tick 2. Again, runners can't move to the food because they've already checked to see if the tile was solid, the same as a regular multi-kill. Then on tick 3, we move another 2 tiles away and we also click to drop the food. The food won't actually drop until the next tick, but because it's an inventory action, it registers and drops on tick 4 before the runners retarget. Therefore, they will retarget the newly dropped food and start moving towards it. Because they have to move 3 to 4 tiles away, depending on the placement, and they move at one tile per tick, they will always reach the food three or four ticks after they target on tick four. Therefore, with false multi-kills, they will always eat on tick seven or eight and soft crash. The rest of the false multi-kill is just simply a series of carefully placed food, usually three to five tiles apart, which cause runners to soft crash each time they eat, before they finally soft multi-kill themselves at the trap. Now there are some no-log methods where the final placement of food is positioned 10 tiles away from the trap food. What this allows is the runners that target on tick 4, move for 10 ticks and then eat on tick 4, automatically one tick multi-killing themselves. Now although false multi-kills and pick-up multi-kills can be really useful in certain situations to help the healer, they can be quite daunting methods to learn. But just remember, every defender method you see, no matter how advanced, can be broken down with four key points. The first is targeting, which Cape Shit's video covers really well, and the rest has been explained here. To summarise, update order is the order within a tick that things are processed. It plays inventory actions happening first, followed by runner interactions and movement, and then it plays interactions and movement. The runner cycle in its three key ticks. Tick 1, we run a spawn and change state to recover from crashes. Tick 4, the multi-kill tick. And tick 6, the random walk tick, which differentiates hard and soft crashes. And finally, states. In state 0, Runners can't target or retarget, but they won't forget their target if they have one. And aside from spawning, they will only go to state 0 when they target a food or their target gets removed. State 1, this is your normal runner that you encounter as they target on tick 4. And state 2 and 3, when a runner random walks 2 to 3 times, which changes their targeting tick. For those interested, the last thing I'll cover is what happens when a runner eats a bad food. The first thing that happens is that the runner will walk vertically either north or south before tiles. The direction they walk is dependent on where they are when they eat, and on what wave they eat. But at the east trap, it will be north on waves 1 to 9, and south on wave 10. They also experience something called blur delay. The moment a runner eats a bad food, their blur delay is set to 3. This is then decreased by 1 during ticks 1 and 6. While the runner is experiencing this delay, they are unable to target or random walk. But once blur delay reaches 0, they are no longer affected, and will random walk again before targeting. It's also really important to take note of when a runner eats a bad food. For runners that eat a bad food during ticks 1 to 5, it's relatively simple. Once the delay wears off, they will resume in their normal cycle, random walking on tick 6, recovering to state 1 on tick 1, and then targeting on tick 4. However, if a runner eats a bad food on ticks 6 to 10, their cycle gets decreased by 5 ticks. This can cause issues if you accidentally place a bad food on the main stack, since a west runner will eat during this window. The reason this is an issue is because it means their cycle will be off 5 ticks from all other runners that didn't blur. For example, if a runner eats a bad food on tick 7, instead of its next tick being 8, it will instead be tick 3. Therefore, once the delay wears off, they will run and walk on tick 1, recover to state 1 on tick 6, and then target on tick 9. 
On screen is a quick overview of the cycle for two runners experiencing blue delay. The left runner eats on tick 4 and the right runner eats on tick 7. If you want to have a look at this more in depth, pause the video, but I'll cover some examples now. The first is an example of wave 9 with the 2-1-4-2 method, where the defender drops a bad fur when they multi at 60 seconds to red or runners. As the runner eats on tick 4, it walks 4 tiles north and experiences blue delay, which is set to 3. This then gets reduced on ticks 1 and 6. Because it ate between ticks 1 to 5, this runner will still be in cycle when the delay is removed on tick 6, and instantly starts random walking because it has no target. Now I included this example specifically because it does something interesting. What happened here was that the runner tried to random walk east, but runners cannot naturally walk any further east than the eastern track. Therefore, it just appears to stand in place, but this is still a random walk. It then recovers to state 1 on tick 1 as normal, and targets on tick 4, where it can be multi-killed, or in this instance, target the south food. In the next example, the runner eats a bad food on tick 6, and its cycle gets reduced by 5 ticks. Therefore, the next tick it experiences is tick 2 as it starts moving north for 4 tiles. Blue delay gets set to 3 as normal and is reduced by 1 on ticks 1 and 6. Since the runner cycle is 5 ticks off, it recovers from blue on tick 1 where it random walks. In this instance, the runner random walks south, which is also commonly mistaken for it targeting. But first, it has to recover to state 1 on tick 6 before finally targeting on tick 9. Now we can still multi-kill a runner that's off cycle with the rest of the runners on tick 4. And the reason for this is because it eats first, and therefore the other runners that were not affected retarget afterwards. But if you have multiple runners that are off cycle, you'll need another log. A useful tip for those not used to the timing is to drop food each to the trap and wait until you see the runner retarget. And that's all I have for now. Thanks to everybody who watched and I hope you find it useful and thanks to all those who made this video possible.